Hallelujah. Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven. Say, ask him, Lord, I want more. I want more, more, and more. I want everything to increase of you in my life. In Jesus' name. Oh, glory. Everybody well? Blessed? Highly flavored? Flavored? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. Grab your swords. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. It's worth the drive. Praise God. <laughs> this is a training session. Remember, this is a military operation, not some kind of religious stuff. Amen? This is a military operation. We are not religious. We're soldiers of the Most High God under the commander-in-chief who's called us to fulfill his purpose and his will. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Would you turn to Luke 17, please? The book of Luke. Luke 17. Luke 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke 17 and verse 20. <clears throat> Let's speak it. Is everybody there? Amen. Now when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said to them, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Within you. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here and look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by his, this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. For they ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all, as it is the days of Noah. You know, it's amazing because he's talking about the end times, the days of Noah. Are we not seeing a lot of floods everywhere? Are we not seeing a lot of things, even fires all over the place? There's been a lot of burnings, there's been a lot of floods, there's been a lot of disaster in fact, even right now, we see a tremendous flood in Texas. We'll talk about that in a second. In verse 28, likewise, it, is all, it was also in the days of Lot. Now, we know Lot was associated with Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we not in the days of Lot again? Well, look at, they approve same-sex marriage. This country kills more babies every year. In abortions, um, there is uh, transgenders and all kinds of other stuff, and they've been approving all of these things, and same thing with the bathrooms and all the other stuff. So they're actually approving this, but of course now we have our president and is trying to turn these things around because God sent them in there. So we see that we are in the last days. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, and they bought, and they sold, and they planted, and they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, and it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop, is there a lot of people on the housetops today? Amen. Amen. Look at Texas. And his goods are in the house. Let him not come down to take him away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life 
will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed, and that one will be taken, another will be left. Two women will be grinding together. One will be taken, the other will be left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken, and the other will be left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Now, this is powerful. In other words, we are in a time, look it. We just had something powerful happen. We just had a complete total, total solar eclipse that went through the middle of the United States. That shadow that went through the middle of the United States was a representation of Passover. Passed over. Does everybody understand that? In other words, we have entered a time of 40 days of repentance. God is drawing as many people as he can right now from all over. He's drawing them out of darkness. He's drawing, what is he bringing people to repentance? Because right now we are seeing rehearsals. We are seeing rehearsals of Noah's days. We're seeing rehearsals of Sodom and Gomorrah days. All of these are rehearsals until the final judgment day. So right now, God is bringing judgment in the, in the house of God. Amen? Amen? Do you know that there will be over 30,000 homeless people in Texas? Billions of dollars in damage. Again, this happened right after the solar eclipse, didn't it? I don't know what's going on in Texas. I didn't do the research yet. These are warning signs of end time. Hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah uprising of the left. Perversion. In other words, there's rioting causing damages. They're for a satanic cause. They're battling fascist groups now that are dressing up just like terrorists. That are anti-Christ and they're anti-Trump. People don't realize that if they're anti-Trump, they're anti-Christ. They have no idea of this. We are in a prophetic time and season that is unfolding before our eyes. It's happening. God is saying, wake up and get ready. Amen? Amen? Wake up and get ready. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to give you another prophetic uh, reality. Actually, I think it's this day or this, I forgot what day, just actually marks, I forgot what it was, Katrina, 12 years. 12 is a biblical governmental, in other words, there were 12 disciples, 12 apostles, and so forth. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 represents government, God's government. In other words, this, this is 12 years from Katrina. And the reality of this is, is God saying, my government, my government reigns. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. And we're going to start at verse 1. Is everybody there? But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober or alert. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to the what? Wrath. He did not appoint us to the wrath. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we who awake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. 
powerful. We are sons of light, not dark. We are not appointed for the wrath of God. That means before the wrath of God comes, you and I should be removed if we're right standing with God. And how are we going to be removed? It's called the rapture. 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter two. Oh, hallelujah. And verse nine. First Peter chapter two and verse nine. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. But you are a chosen generation. Everyone say, I'm chosen. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called. Everyone say, I'm called. I am the called. I am the called. Called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people of, of but not a people, but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. This is powerful. So you, are not, you and I are a chosen generation. We are the called. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. To lay a little foundation first. The called. Everyone say, I'm called. Chosen generation, called out of darkness, people of God, obtain mercy. Listen, you're not here by coincidence, right? You're here because you're called. Amen. Nobody called you by the phone. You got called by heaven. 1-800-G-O-D. <laughs> and John 15. The called. John 15, 15. Everyone say, many are called, many are called. but few are chosen. Are chosen. 15, 15. Let's speak it. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I, ha I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, well, but I chose what? You. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Hello. That's why we are the called. We've been called out of the world. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. God chose you. You did not choose him. I mean, we hit enough roadblocks in our life and got dragged through enough bushes to where he finally said, okay. We disappointed ourselves and everybody else enough in our lives to finally said, you know what? I can't do this no more. I want to change. But the thing is, is we, so, many, you know, so many times we tried to change ourselves, but it didn't work. So God begins to move on our behalf in the moment that we become humble. Humble. When we realize that nothing else works. I need you, God. And you may not even know who he is. But the more you call on him, the more you eat of his word, the more you worship him, he begins to reveal himself to you more and more and more until you realize 
there's been an exchange of identity. You no longer identify yourself with the world anymore. You only identify yourself with eternal. You are now an eternal, immortal being. You cannot die. This flesh will die, but you'll never die because you've been called. Unless you choose to go back and serve Satan, then you're going to die and go to hell. It's real simple. But how stupid can you be and still breathe and do that, right? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. In verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Everybody there? Let's speak it. If my people who are what? Who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Wow. I will heal their land. That's what God is drawing many people to. I'm telling you, there's never been so many prayers up for this country than there is now. That's why there's a big fight. There's a fight against one world order who is ruled under Satan's kingdom and a fight under God's kingdom. It's so enormous. It's phenomenal. No matter where you turn, you see it. It's happening all over. But we are called by his name. Why? Because we are the called. Everyone say, I am, I am the, called. the called. I'm called out of darkness. I'm called, out of darkness. I'm called to freedom. I'm called to, I'm called to joy. I'm called to, I'm called to prosper. I'm called to, prosper. I'm called to be a warrior. I'm to be a warrior. And I'm called to be victorious. Romans 1, you victorious ones. There's so many dimensional barriers to bust through to where you begin to realize who you are. Because there's an exchange of identity. You've al we've always identified ourselves according to the world. Many of us wanted to be professional athletes, a doctor, or whatever it may be. We had these identities that we wanted to be someone, even as we grew up as children. You know, we called ourselves their names. Yes, I'm Michael Jordan, or I'm this, or I'm that, or, you know, always wanting to be someone according, in other words, heroes of the physical world. But they were temporary. But there's a hero of the eternal world. His name is Jesus. Amen. So we begin to exchange our identity. No longer we want to be like someone of the world. We want to be like him. In other words, we want to live and please him. We want to know more about who we are because the other side is to become more real than this side to me and you. Because this side is temporary. Everything in this realm dies. Everything. But you and I have been called out to, of the dead zone. <laughs> We've been called out of the dead realm. Everything. Man, when I have my visitation from the Lord, I realize, my gosh, this place is temporary. I'd be leaning on a tree and I'd say, you're temporary. Everything was temporary. Because the reality of that I was eternal made everything so real in the area that this is temporary. We're no longer of this world. We're just cruising through. But God sent me and you into this world. Amen? Amen. To help clean up this world. And bring as many souls home as possible. Because this is not our home. In fact, that's why we walked in this world going, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Those, all, those three questions always stayed in me and you until we finally came to Christ and got filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Oh, maybe I'd be like this person. Maybe No identity. Until you truly get 
filled and touched by God, and that identity comes and goes, my gosh, I'm a son of the Most High God. I'm his offspring. He's my dad. Now, if my dad created everything, hello, then I have everything. Because he said, whatever he has, I can have. Amen? Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. Where did I say to go? Romans 1? Praise God. Romans 1 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be what? An apostle separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be what? Saints, so you don't get voted to be a saint. You are. God didn't ask you how you felt about it. Your feelings are very deceptive. See, so many people live in how they feel. And that soulish realm of how you feel can destroy you. From this day forward, you must live by what God says, not by how you feel. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 28. Everyone say, I am, I am a new creation, new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things pass away. All things become new. Okay, because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Because you're the called. Do you know because you are called, you have the authority to speak God's words? Is that kick or what? God has given you the right to speak his words. The world can't speak his, world, his words. Only those who are called. Because only those who are called, his words mean something. Those that are not called, his words don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 28. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For we know that all things work together for the good to those who love him and to those who are the called according to his purpose. So everything is going to work to the good no matter what you've been doing. No matter how many mistakes you made. No matter how many things you've done, it's going to work to the good once you get going. Once you get in line with God. It's going to work to the good. It takes a minute to penetrate sometimes <laughs> got to hammer that in you mean things are going to get better yes yeah verse 29 for whom the he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he predestined these he also called whom he called, these he also justified. Everyone say, I'm called. called. So I'm justified. <laughs> and whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, why? Because you're the called. This has got to be such an impartation, especially the times and seasons that we are in right now, that we are the called. The call to call the rescue, the call to freedom, the call to bring freedom to others. The call. We have favor. Those who are called have favor. <laughs> According to his purpose, amen. In this it says to be conformed into his into Christ, the image of Christ. That means divine nature. A divine nature. Through Christ, that divine nature. It's coming more and more and more. 
called, justified, and glorified for his glory. Conformed into his divine nature. That means the human nature is dissipating as you continue the process of conversion. And, and most of the time, you don't even realize it until you choose to make a decision on something that you would have made a bad decision before, and this time you didn't. You know what? Why? Because something's happening with you. You no longer approve of certain things that you used to approve of. You don't approve of dirty jokes. You don't approve of other things. You, don't, you no longer approve of way of life according to the world's way. There's another way of life. It's an eternal way of life, not a temporary way of life. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1. You know, John the Baptist, he was known as the voice that was crying from the wilderness. It was like he was calling. It's like Jesus is the voice that's been calling for years for me and you. How many times he tried to rescue us and we ignored it? I mean, even big tractor trailers came about in front of us, you know, <laughs> had signs on it. Jesus saves, you know, <laughs> trying to tell us the whole time. You got behind somebody's car and there was a bumper that spoke to you. Repent because the kingdom of God is at hand, you know, <laughs> whatever it was. Just say no. <laughs> I remember that one. Just say no. The problem is we were saying no to God <laughs> and yes to the dope dealer. <laughs> yes to the world. But now we can say yes to him and no to the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. <laughs> Glory. Verse, is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are what? Called. But God has chosen to what? foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Praise God. So we were really out there then. <laughs> but he said, look at that. Come on. I'm going to call. I'm going to turn you into one of my trophies. I'm going to turn you into a trophy of mine. No matter where you've been, no matter what, no matter how you think, I'm going to change your way of thinking. I'm going to change your desires. I'm going to change you. I'm going to take you like a sock that you pull inside out. <laughs> Not a used one anymore. Brand new. No stinky. Brand new and fresh because you've been called. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of whom you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom, from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So we are the called from God, that voice that's been calling you for your whole life. But the voice of the enemy always interrupted because we couldn't tell the difference until we finally accepted the true voice. Now, which is powerful, we are becoming the wisdom of God through the Holy Spirit more and more. So now there's an exchange also from the wisdom of the world to the wisdom of God, which is above the world's wisdom. Because see, now you'll be able to see, you come to a place where you'll be able to see through the physical realm into the spirit realm. In 2 Timothy chapter 1,
You can't quit. Amen? Because there's another, every step you take more into the spirit, there's another battle. And you got to bust that wall so you can enter in. You bust the next wall and you enter in. Because you, while you're busting that wall, you're changing. Because that wall that's being busted is nothing but wineskin. It's like skins that's being peeled away because you're becoming brand new. I don't know if you've ever taken apart a hard ball or a golf ball. You know what's wrapped around the core of it? Rubber bands. And every time you pull that rubber band to get to the core, it hurts. And you just keep popping it and popping it until you get to the core and it becomes a Super Bowl. Amen. But man, we'd go through great lengths, great pain. Some of you'd be tears coming down. But I'm going to get to that Super Bowl. And that's how God does it with me and you. We turn from natural to supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Where are we going? Second Timothy 1. The called. Second Timothy chapter 1. Now think about this. Think about how you and I used to live our lives and we didn't die when we should have died. I mean, I overdosed enough times I should have ended up in hell. Do you know that there are 60,000 overdose, drug overdoses, this in 2016 in this country? 60,000 people died of overdose alone in this country. In one year, 60,000, just from drug overdose. That's a lot of people. That's not somebody getting shot or killed. That's an overdose of drugs. In verse 8, but we're still alive. Why? Because you've been called. But the thing is, is you didn't reject the call. You accepted it. First Timothy, or 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. And therefore, do not be what? Ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. So hold fast to the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Very powerful. So you and I have a holy calling. That means righteous. It's not just about good. It's a righteous calling. There's a difference. Because you and I at one time were eating of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Now we're eating of the tree of life. So there's a difference between righteousness and just good. Righteousness is associated with right standing before God. There's a lot of good people out there, but they're not righteous. Amen? 2 Peter 1. And because you are called, that means your first call, you have, a call you've been, you have a call, amen? You have a purpose and a destiny. You are called to battle. Everyone say, I'm called to battle. My purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And my destiny is to infiltrate the world system. So God's given you talents and abilities to infiltrate the world system, but you can't infiltrate the world system with the talents and abilities that you used to have. They're being exchanged for new talents and abilities that God's given you so you can infiltrate the world system. 
So if you're in this room, you've been called. If you're listening to this message, you've been called. There's no coincidences in the kingdom. Ifs or buts are not in the kingdom. Absolutes. Yes. Promises. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us, who what? Called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In other words, the divine nature is the only way out. By putting on that divine nature is your only way out. You can't get into heaven without a divine nature. The human nature will not make it. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance to eternity will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Powerful. So we are going to be given, we've got knowledge, we have divine power, we have great promises, and the divine nature, which is the only way out. Amen? 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, the called. And verse 1. Let's speak at first John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteous is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So we're to carry on that ministry. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. So you and I are called to be just like him. That's what that transforming, and we're being transformed all the time into his image and into his likeness all the time. If you're willing to cooperate, because that's the price. Without cooperation, you don't change. You can sit in a corner all the rest of your life and never participate, and you won't change, because it takes cooperation to change. Amen? You don't get clean by just standing outside the shower. 
until somebody finally pushes you in because you stink. Hello? Seems that way sometimes God's got to come around to just push you in. 1 John 4. True identity. And verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which we have heard from was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and they have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who knows God hears us. Hmm. He who does not know God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. Let's speak it. The little, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing, which is the eternal power presence of God Almighty through the Holy Spirit, from the Holy One, and you know all things. So the anointing teaches us. We're being taught by the anointing, not by a man. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? deceive us but you have but you but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things it is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him why because we are the called and i'm going to close at first timothy 6 You know how many people wish they would have accepted the call? I can tell you right now, there's not one unbeliever in hell. They all believe now. They all believe now. The problem is, is they can't follow. And they sure wish they accepted the call. But they didn't. They kept saying, one more, I'll, I'll, I'll be right there. I'll do it. I'll be right there. One more hit. One more drink. One more night of pleasure. One more night of this. One more night of that. And something occurred where they lost their last breath and they woke up in hell. Terrible place. To be eternally separated from God. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Is everybody there? In verse 11. And we better go back a little bit. Verse 3. I guess that's back far enough. <laughs> if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent with wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accounts with godliness, accords with godliness, he is what? He's an idiot. He's proud. 
knowing nothing, but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourselves. These are called religious spirits. A lot of religious people out there, but they really don't know the Lord. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man or woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Remember, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but demonic forces and these demonic forces love to come and speak to you these are spirits these are demons addiction is nothing but a demon many sicknesses and diseases are nothing but demonic amen many bad habits are nothing but demonic the word says stay away from corruptible people why because it affects your habits Amen. You become like them. So we are in a time right now where the reality of where we must step into is the called. We are the called. We were called out of darkness into his glorious light. He called you. Now we call him. Amen. Now we call him. And he's getting ready to do something very, very powerful. Very powerful. Because he says all things are going to work to the good. Well, let me tell you, something about is about to explode. Because revival is about to break out. There's all kinds of things that are about to happen. You see the tensions and the fight all over the world. It's all over the world. Wars, rumors of war, North Korea, all of this stuff. China. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. You got Syria, you got Iran, and every other. I mean, it's just crazy. Rumors of wars. Contentions. Everything is escalating. Imposters, wickedness, and evilness is coming up. More addictions. More people dying of overdoses. People are coming out of the closet. I didn't know they were in there. I mean, but they're, they're not coming the way they used to. They're changing in the closets. The problem. People are just losing whatever they feel like they're doing. There's no restraints. And that's Satan's doctrine. Do what you feel like. That's his doctrine. Doctrines of demons. Seductive and seducing spirits. Hindering and causing people to go down the wrong path. Who started off right. And then changed course because of lust. Lust is nothing but more than a desire. In fact, addiction is nothing but lust. It's an overwhelming desire. That's what lust means. So when people are addicted, it's because they've fallen into lust. Falling into relationships they shouldn't be. All kinds of things. There's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. But we are the call. We've got to come out and cut loose and maintain the calling so that we may be a sign of wonder for his glory and a trophy for him. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word, and we thank you that we are the called, called from you. But Lord, now we call on you. We ask Jesus in your mighty, mighty name that you move quickly and abundantly in our lives, that you'll visit us in dreams and visions, that your face will shine upon your people and your countenance will uplift them, that you'll bring them reality of who they truly are, their fresh anointing of their identity because they are the called ones out of darkness and into your kingdom. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you and go before you and snare your enemies while you escape safely in the reality of who you are in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen.